Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Campbell, and this is Making Stuff. Welcome to the new Making Stuff headquarters. It doesn't look like much yet, but uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, you'll probably hear the sound doesn't sound too amazing, but I am planning on putting some carpets in here, and I'm going to get some acoustic treatment against the walls. Coming soon. So before I tell you the reasons for this renovation and what my plans are for the future of this channel, I'd like to tell you a bit of a story and it goes something like this. Um, this isn't a story about uh, Macon the Maker, as most of the subscribers on my YouTube channel will probably know me for. I'm talking about Macon the guitarist and the musician and my journey thus far. So I only started playing the guitar after I finished school, uh, roughly a year or two before I met my wife and got married and started having a whole bunch of kids. Now I wasn't really interested in guitar playing or music in general. As a kid I was too preoccupied with other things. But I was always very much against rock and metal and heavy music in general. In my opinion, you know, back then, it was just all a noise to me and obviously just because I didn't understand it. I used to be that guy at school that would say things like uh, heavy metal is just noise and it's the devil's music. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, looking at me now, you probably never guessed that, but uh, I was that guy. Shortly after I finished with school, I connected with a guy that used to be in school with me. His name was Billy Frobler. He played the acoustic guitar and some electric guitar, and I sort of picked it up from him. And the two of us used to play open mic nights at uh, a local pub. That was probably like the first time ever that I'd been on a stage with an instrument in my hand. That particularly has always been really hard for me. You know, I have a constant fear of embarrassing myself or looking stupid in front of other people. And uh, I know I shouldn't, but that's just me. As a result of that, I used to work just that much harder when we were practicing songs and things like that, specifically so I wouldn't make a fool of myself on stage. We played together alone for a while, and then eventually we got two other friends in and we started an actual band. The initial name of the band used to be White Fox Outside, and the reason for that was I used to drive a Volkswagen Caddy Bucky, um, which is also known as a Fox, and it was always parked outside the garage at my friend's house that we used to practice. But as many bands inevitably do, um, we did break up. After that, for at least probably a year or two, I didn't really play guitar seriously. I only played a little bit of acoustic guitar, you know, campfire and barbecue type of music. Um, but I never really took it seriously. And then at some stage at a house party at my house, we had a guy over named uh, Stefan Stein, who I remembered from school. He was a couple of years older than me. I think he was in the same grade as my sister. He took my crappy stag guitar, which was a Stratocaster copy, and he took my knockoff Fender amp. When he started playing, you know, the things that came out of that little setup, I just I couldn't believe. At that specific moment, I knew that that is what I want. One thing led to another. He started giving me random lessons, you know, once every two or three months he'd come to my house. I'd actually pay him in vodka. I'd buy a bottle of vodka, we'd drink it out, and he'd write a couple of notes for me. I think I might even still have some of those notes. Write down chord shapes and scales and uh, all sorts of stuff. stage YouTube tutorials and things like that weren't big yet. We were all after um, instructional DVDs like Ingwie Malmsteen and John Petrucci and Michelangelo Batio, guys like that. And eventually after a couple of lessons from him and hours of work myself, I got a phone call from a guy named Roberto who used to play in a band called um, DOG, uh, which stands for Delusions of Grandeur. And Stefan, who gave me lessons, actually recommended to them that they give me a call because he saw I was putting in the work and I was quickly improving as they were looking for another guitar player because their guitar player was moving to Germany I think. Pretty big shoes to fill. The guy who I replaced the name was Johan de Jager, really good guitar player and that was my first taste and I had no choice, I had to put in the, I had to put in the hours. I used to tell them straight, you know, when we're busy rehearsing and there's a part that I don't get and I'm struggling with, I'd tell them, look, chill, I don't get this now, I'm struggling with it, but I know how it goes. Next band practice, I'll have it down. And I always did. So that next night, I was up hours practicing so that when I go back to band practice, I'll be able to play those parts properly, well, as good as possible. And that's something that I've really carried with me through all my bands. So after playing with Dog for a couple of months, I got approached by another band called um, Trust Undone. I went for the first kind of audition and uh, most of it was way above my skill level. 
that in a way scared me a lot but it also opened my eyes this was the first time that i was going to be playing with a guitarist that was almost 10 times better than i am i saw a major opportunity there because um, i had someone that i could learn from and the music that we were making was so much more complex than anything else i'd ever done i knew that it was going to push me and my skill level to uh, new heights. Eventually it was getting hard to juggle two bands. So I resigned from Dog and uh, being in Trust Undone was amazing for me. It was the most fun I've ever had playing music. I was putting in the hours and my skill level was rising fast. You know, I try and play some of those songs now and I'm like, oh my God, how did I ever play this? But once again, I suppose it wasn't meant to be. After about two years, maybe a little bit longer, um, we also broke up. Um, I'll not go into details on that, but uh, it was a pretty messy breakup. I managed to get custody of the drummer, Wayne Benson, so I was okay. And I have pretty much played almost every single band since then with him. I've joined bands where we had other drummers and somehow I've always managed to get Wayne on the team too. So after Trust I'm Done, um, as I mentioned, I did play with quite a few bands after that, but none of the bands I've ever played for were at the same level technically than what uh, Trust Undone was. So there wasn't really much of a challenge anymore for me and there was nothing to keep me at the level that I was. And uh, my guitar skills just kept going down and down and down. I'm just astounded at how much I've lost. That's quite sad, you know, that's a lot of work, a lot of time that went into building those skills. So fast forward probably about seven, eight years of a couple of random bands, but nothing that was getting me out of bed in the morning. For the last uh, maybe two years, I've been playing for two bands again, and uh, one of them was called Blood Bath. Um, I really enjoyed the music. It's an awesome group of people, as well as another band called Wolf Hunt. Um, the leader of that band, Jacques de Vries, um, he's been playing guitar since uh, he was a kid, as far as I can understand and he has really good chops. But the only catch was I was playing bass for Wolf Hunt. While I was enjoying the music, um, probably a bit more than my other band, I wasn't enjoying the experience of playing bass as much. Uh, nevertheless, I really enjoyed it. Um, I played the bass pretty much like a, a guitarist. I didn't really have that much of a feel for it. Somewhere near the end of last year, I decided I was going to try and build my skill levels back up to where they were and hopefully beyond. I initially decided I was going to quit both bands because I knew that um, it was obviously going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of hard work to get my skills back to where they were. I quit uh, Look Back first, which was very sad. I feel obviously really bad, you know, disappointing them. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to follow your heart. And I did quit Wolf Hunt as well, but they were, um, they were a little bit more reluctant to let me go. And they said, take all the time you need, do what you gotta do, and uh, we'll just take a little bit of a break now. That was actually really nice of them, uh, but my plan was still to leave the band. After the December holidays, and we came back, we came together for a meeting, and I was planning on telling them that uh, I'm not going to carry on, and uh, they're gonna have to find themselves another base. So when we got together, um, Jack and Benny actually suggested that I play guitar as well and we get another bassist. That changed everything. I very much looked up to Jack for his uh, awesome guitar skills. I sort of felt almost like I felt um, when I joined Trust Undone. And I was excited again, very excited. So this would mean that um, I get the best of both worlds. I can still work and build up my chops and also have a really good guitarist that I can learn from. So obviously without any hesitation, I said, 100% I'm in. So here we are three months later and I'm really happy to announce that my skill levels must be at least double what they were three months ago. Still nowhere near what it used to be right after Trust I'm Done broke up but you know it's a step in the right direction and that is a nice segue into why I did this whole renovation and what the future of my channel is. In a nutshell here it is. I started this uh, YouTube channel um, initially called MC's Garage uh, for making camel. Duh. It was uh, mainly a way to try and get out of the job that I was in. I was working in a family business uh, with my mother and my sister. I learned a lot of things there. I'm very happy and very grateful for everything I learned there. But you know, um, my family history is complicated. My mother and my sister do not always see eye to eye. That constant arguing and uh, fighting was um, really not doing good for any of us. I knew if I told my wife that um, I want to quit my job so that I can start making music, um, she would laugh at me. 
But it was very important to me that whatever it is that I decide to do next, it has to be something that I really love doing and I'm very passionate about. The only other thing that I've ever really loved doing other than playing the guitar is uh, working with my hands. Now, over the years I've done a bit of welding, a bit of woodworking and DIY stuff and I've always enjoyed that. So initially when I started my workshop, it wasn't mainly for the YouTube channel, I was actually planning on making things and selling them and trying to make a living that way. I quickly started to gravitate more towards the YouTube side of it, um, especially when I got my first check from YouTube and it was a tiny amount, but uh, that got me excited and um, thinking that perhaps this could actually be something I make a living with. I stopped doing commission work and I focus mainly on this channel. Uh, the channel is doing really well and I'm at um, 6,300 subscribers I think right now but it's nowhere near making any money for me. I put endless hours of work and effort into this channel and I absolutely love almost every single video that I put out. Um, you know, every single one of them is a part of me, something that I've made and documented and shared with the world and that's something that's going to be there forever and that is kind of what has been driving my YouTube channel, something that the rest of the world and also my family will know me by for many years after I'm gone. So as much as I tell myself that um, I'm not doing it for um, the money, because obviously there is no money, the views or the achievements or the fame or whatever, there's always still that little part of you that is always hoping, you know, obviously I'm only human. You know, any other YouTuber that tells me different is lying. There is always that little part of you that is always driving for that as well. That can be good and it can be bad as well. Obviously it raises expectation and it also can cause disappointment. Most of you probably know that I haven't uploaded a video in probably three weeks maybe or maybe a month and that is because I've been contemplating, I've been thinking about what I'm doing, what I'm spending all my time and energy on. I know that if I put in the work and I keep on making these videos, eventually I will achieve success because that's just how it works. The more work you put in, the more likely you are to achieve success. But what I started to question was the direction that uh, my channel is going in. If I want my channel to be a representation of myself, why should it only include just this little part of me, this uh, making things, making stuff and my channel has pretty much been a passion for me for the last two years maybe. Music has been my passion for 18 years. If I'm going to pick something that I'm going to try and master in my lifetime, obviously I should be choosing something that I have a bit of a head start in. I have these years of experience already versus experience that I still need to gain in the workshop. So basically what it boils down to is in the future of this channel, I'm going to be putting a lot more music content documenting the regrowth, shall we say, of my guitar skills. So don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not only going to make music on this channel, but um, that is definitely going to be a much larger part of the content that I create. I will obviously still be um, doing build videos, you know, renovations like the one that I'm going to show you now, um, which incidentally, um, I apologize, is not very well documented. This is a fairly small space and it's difficult to get. Uh, all the shots I wanted to and some of my time lapses were all out of focus but um, you'll be able to get the, the gist of it. Um, so I'll definitely be doing build videos still in the future, especially the carving and the mini weapons and all those kind of things that uh, have started becoming a staple of my channel because I really enjoy those. So I guess I've just reached the point where I really don't care about the numbers anymore. Um, at this stage, I just want to upload and create um, things that are awesome and inspiring for me and uh, hopefully for at least a couple of you out there. I know that this decision will probably result in losing like half of my subscribers, but who cares, you know, I'd rather have people watching me and supporting me that are really interested in me and the things that I create on this channel. So in this specific video, I'm only going to show you um, the renovation I did on this office. Um, all I basically did was remove a cupboard, uh, tiles on floor, um, which incidentally was the first time I've ever laid a tile and that was quite a challenge, <laughs> hair raising at times. And I painted a wall. Um, this is part one of the renovation for 
this, which is going to be my studio, um, where I'm going to be recording a whole lot more music-related videos, recording songs, uh, maybe some lessons, uh, not really lessons because I don't feel like I qualify to teach people things, but I'm just going to share some of my experiences and hopefully take you along on my journey of seeing how far I can take my skill on the guitar and as a musician in general. So. Uh, So if you're still watching this, then uh, chances are you are probably one of those people that are going to stick with me through this and are perhaps passionate about uh, music as well as making things. One thing that I've noticed from this maker community and YouTube community is somehow most of the really good makers out there always end up being musicians as well, which has always been strange to me. Most of the people that I watch and follow on YouTube have got some kind of music in their lives, whether they play it or they're just very passionate about it. And I see the same to be true sometimes the other way around as well, where musicians and artists are also interested in you know, making things and crafting in general. So uh, I'm hoping that the decision I made and the videos that I'm going to be making in the future doesn't scare off too many people and I hope there's some of you still left here that can uh, join me on this journey ahead. So by now you're probably tired of my voice, so I'll let you go. Um, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, keep making stuff.